wrestlers. Sometimes teams don't have heavyweights anymore. Okay, we've gone a minute and eight seconds. Both boys in their stance. His positioning so key in college, more so than high school, you'll see always fighting for that key position and then that one chance to take that shot and score. Smith, five foot 11 inches tall. Nimitz, about the same, I would guess. Nemeth is looking for a little bit of a shuck there. Takes a bad shot. Looks like Josh uh, Smith is going to score here. Nemeth, very, very good defense over here. Josh has got to get his head under that leg or come back across to a double because Nemeth's going to throw the boots in here and score. As soon as he gets hip to hip, he'll have it. Smith is hanging tough there. And there's a takedown for Nemeth. He's got the legs in tough. It looks like Smith might be coming out the back here. He's got a pop nice, pop his hips over. Nemeth is just ripping his shoulder. Last 10 seconds. Smith looks like he's just about out, but no such luck in the first period's going to end. It's Nick Nemeth of Kent State leading 2-0. We're into the third period here at 165 pounds with Nick Nemeth on the bottom position. He leads 2-0, and now he leads 3-0 with that escape. The whole second period was Nemeth riding Smith. He now has an extra two minutes and 22 seconds of riding time. That's an extra point for sure. And the two-point takedown for Smith. And then I see what you mean. That wouldn't have been picked on it. <laughs> Not at all. I'm surprised that uh, Smith has the stamina left because Nemeth really rode him hard that last period. That's what I like to see, though. Smith was the aggressive wrestler there, and he got credit for the takedown, even though he was at the edge of the mat. And in high school, they probably wouldn't have given it as complete control. But anyway, that made the score 3-2, and now the escape made it 4-2. And we need to remember that there's still 2 minutes and 18 seconds of extra riding time for Nemeth. Here's another nice single by Smith. Keeping that double there so Nemeth can't throw the legs in. He's got to step over here. Nemeth kind of puts a figure four on the head there and comes right back into crotch. And the stalemate. Roy Smith is getting in there now. He is. He just got to, he has to figure a way to finish. You know, a lot of times he's just sitting in there. He's got to pick his head up. He could hit a Peterson here. Kind of come around back here. Out of the pants for Kenner. There's that Peterson. There it goes. Oh, he almost had it. Emma throws him back over. Nice counter. Emmett back for the takedown. That'll make it 6 2. And that's going to be it. That's the clincher. I think you're right. The freshman from Kent State University, Nick Nemeth, came in with a 7 and 6 record, but he has wrestled brilliantly tonight. Exceptional in the time position. And he ends up. With the riding time point and a 7-2 decision over Josh Smith, a junior from Cleveland State University. And that'll give Kent the early 3-0 lead in the team score. At 174 pounds, that's Ryan Kinley, the redshirt freshman from Kent State. He's 2-4 and four right now. And he'll be going up against a very exciting sophomore from Cleveland State University, Gerald Harris. He was 26-12 last year as a freshman, qualified for the NCAAs, and he's 15-7 and seven this year. I think we're going to see 
contrasting styles again here. Gerald Harrison, the times I've seen him, is very explosive at times. He'll kind of just be hanging in a close match and just explode for some points. Kinley's kind of a conservative, good, hard-nosed wrestler. He's the second straight St. Ed grad that Ken has put out on the mat. Nemeth winning, of course, 7-2 at 165. It's interesting, Nemeth was a 140-pounder in high school. He wrestles 165. Kinley was a 171 in high school, and he wrestles 174. <laughs> they probably never worked out in high school, but are best friends now. Nice shot by Gerald Harris. He's nice fight there by Kinley to get out. Kinley, much shorter than Harris, but very powerfully built. These guys are always looking for that inside control and a little level change to a quick shot when you say inside control Dan what do you mean by that well you want to you see him working their hands there you want to be inside so that you're when you get that chance to lower your level you get your hands are inside control and so they don't get caught outside and get underhooked on your shot you see Gerald trying to get work in there again now he's got both He's got control in, and Kinley gets out. There's Kinley, nice little shot. And Harris had the inside control, was able to just push him right off. It's really hard to teach younger kids. They're always over aggressive and shooting from too far out, or then they get caught in underhooks, and they can't score. They get frustrated. There's Harris again, trying to work an inside with an underhook. Jacking him up, double underhook. Kinley's got to be careful he doesn't get called for stalling here. And there's the warning on Kinley. Oh, nice shot. Harris still has it inside. This is about you got to think where Cleveland State expects to win. They have an experienced sophomore who has already won 41 college matches against the redshirt freshman who's only won two. I mean, if they're going to win this duel meet, this is the kind of match they have to win. Right, and they, they should probably expect to win big. And the takedown with 15 seconds to go. And there was a shot that they didn't have real good inside control and a little go-round for Harris. The first period will end with Gerald Harris leading 2-0. Third period action now at 174 pounds. Harris with the takedown in the first period and an escape point in the second. Leading 3 nothing, and now Kinley with the escape makes it 3-1. Right now, riding time not a factor. And a match I think, Dan, that Cleveland State hoped to win and win big is turning out to be a real dark fight. This is definitely to Kent's advantage. Kinley's really hanging in there. He's doing a nice job of tying Harris up. Harris just can't get his shot off. Both boys have been warned once for stalling, so the next warning will cost somebody a point. One of the things I think Harris is having trouble with is getting underneath Kinley. There is, as you say, a substantial height difference. Right, he's trying to get that underhook, and, and Kinley just won't let him get it. And now Kinley's starting to feel more confident. Okay. Harris just has to get more motion in his arms. His arms are stagnant. He's just kind of hanging now instead of moving his hands and making his opening a little better on his shot. Look at the power there. He's looking for a big move here. Inside trip, didn't get it. He's got a bear hug. He's got to jack him up and sweep or go for an inside trip. Got to pull him in, though. Kinley's got to be careful because he's all... Oh. I think it's a Harris's advantage if he gets in a little flurry here. But again, his hands are, are just stagnant. They're not as moving like the first period. There's a nice shot. This could be the takedown that would really cinch the match if he can make it. Kinley yeah. again, stepped right out of it. He's just hanging in there. He never believed that he's a redshirt freshman here.
little collision there. Kim Lee has got a circle around here. Harris is working those underhooks. Here he goes again. Harris looking for the go around. Not going to be there, and the match is going to end with Harris winning 3-1 and tying up the dual meet at three apiece. But a nice job by both wrestlers, and Ryan Kinley, as you said, Dan, hung in there tough, but there's Gerald Harris, the winner at 174 pounds. At 184 pounds, that's Josh Greenspan, the junior from Cleveland State University, a transfer from Indiana. He was 10 and, he's 10 and 5 this year, and he'll be up against Nick Magistrelli from Kent State. He's 14 and 3 already this year. He's a redshirt junior. Both boys from the local Cleveland area. Greenspan wrestled at Shaker, Magistrelli at Maple Heights. And I wonder if these boys even wrestled in high school. Nice little shot there by Magistrelli. Got it lifted high, nice. There's your two. And these boys wrestled once before, early this season, with Magistrelli getting beat by Greenspan 13 to four, but they were wrestling at 197. Now they're down at 184. The Greenspan gets the escape to make it 2-1. There's awful big 184 pounders. Interesting, Greenspan was a state champion his senior year at Shaker Heights, 1996. And what was something of an upset beating Kevin Boris in the state finals after having lost to him before? And again, Magistrelli in there. And again with two more points, and it's 4-1. Magistrelli has got a great level change there. Nice quick shot, kind of catching Greenspan off, off guard. We saw his brother Anthony at the Brexville tournament winning 160 pounds. And there's back point. He almost had a fall there. I was going to say, Frank Romano said a fall would be huge, and that was close. That's going to be worth it. He's still got the, the bar there, so he hasn't been awarded back points yet. I think we've seen that tilt there a little, little bit in uh, high school. Maple, old Maple Heights tilt. 7-1. And the first period's going to end with a 7-1 lead for Magistrelli. Both boys up in the second. Quick shot by Magistrelli, countered by Greenspan. There's a takedown. And that makes it 7-3. It'll be interesting if he rides him to take a, a chunk of that riding time away or kick him out because he's behind. He's got to make it up. Looks like he's going to spend some time on top. Coach Span a wrestler who always seemed to wrestle in spurts to me. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. Personally, I think he should just cut him out. There he goes. That makes it eight to three right now. I don't know if it's me, but it looks like Magistrelli's tank is a little bit emptier than it. I think you're right. You can see his hands are are, are up on uh, Josh's shoulders. That therefore it's a little easier shot. This is still a tough takedown. No points yet. There it is. And that now makes it eight five. As Greenspan has really inaugurated a comeback here. And the escape with only 19 seconds to go. Kind of a surprise there. Yeah, I'm very surprised at that. Had he ridden him out, he would have just about prevented the one minute of extra riding time as well. Plus, he gave up a point with less than 20 seconds to go. Both boys have been warned for stalling. And the period ends 9-5, Magistrelli. 
match of contrast here. A great first period for Magistrelli with two takedowns in that critical three-point near fall. Greenspan all over him in the second period with two with two takedowns himself. And now he's riding him. Doesn't make sense, but coach must have seen something. The pace of this match has been fast and furious. Both boys look just a little bit tired. It's gonna come down to a little bit of shape here. Magistrelli's shot is straight into the mat this time. Not as no depth to it. He's just kind of dropping. He does seem tired. 11-7 right now. Minute and 17 to go. Both boys tired now, but I think Greenspan maybe is a little bit, a little bit the fresher of the two. They just can't convert his takedown. And Magistrelli hangs on. He builds up that huge first period lead of seven to one, and ends up stopping Greenspan's takedown to win 11-8. They had 197 pounds. There's Drew Sparks of Cleveland State, a freshman with only six varsity matches in his resume one win and he's up against Zeb Miller another freshman from Kent State who's 9-7 this year battle of freshmen but there is a difference Miller a redshirt freshman meaning he set out last year whereas Sparks is a true freshman this is his first year of collegiate wrestling and that one year of college wrestling is so important even if you're redshirting oh yeah you're still you're still around you're still uh, active in the room a little bit you're working out you, you can go to some open tournaments and just taste what the college life is like especially wrestling is at such a different level than high school and this is a match Kent probably is looking to, to win big here Sparks oh nice shot there nice fight by Sparks he's a state runner-up as a junior and the placer the next year. He's been an exceptional high school wrestler and also an exceptional football player. Wow, I'm impressed by the movement on both these boys. Yeah, these aren't exactly 125 pounders we're talking about. <laughs> but we're seeing some good technique. Both guys attacking and defending very well. Nice little drop in on a single there for Sparks and he converts it. He's gotta be careful, he's getting a little high here. Piece. Sparks wrestled 215 last year at uh, Warren Holland High School. There was an example of a freshman mistake, Brian. He gets a takedown and right away he rushes the legs in and boom, off he goes. Miller, a 171 pounder in high school, comes from a great family of wrestlers. Three of his brothers were state champs. And I think he would have been, had he not been hurt, he missed his entire junior year. And really was not quite himself even his senior year. I think Drew would have trouble here with the legs in college. That's always the hard thing your first year of college, the way kids throw legs compared to high school. Sparks leading 3-2 here late in the first period. This takedown followed by quickly by a reverse by Miller and now an escape. You hear a coach yelling inside, inside. That's all I hear him yelling anymore. <laughs> well, if you want to take someone down, you got to get that inside control. Yep. Twelve seconds to go here. You can see the clock in the background. Sparks is hanging tough. Four three Miller at the end of the period. Miller on top. Sparks did take the down position. That's very surprising. Oh. 
He's got to get out quicker. He's just giving up the, the riding time differential now, a minute and 50 seconds. I was very surprised by that because all the mannerisms by Sparks, he just looks like a tired wrestler. And he had such a hard time getting out last period. Back point there. at a fall possibly here. Oh, good fight. And a three-period near fall now makes it 9-4. And now it may be just a question of Sparks surviving. I just, think keep, just keeping it a regular decision. Right. And a warning now on Sparks. He's not doing much as you suggested, Dan. He's tired. Half a uh, minute to go. And a minute's a long time in a college match. Another near fall here would, would give out a major decision. And every point with only 10 matches in a college match is very valuable. Looks like he's got him again. And the battle ends. Add in the riding time point and it's a 10-4 win for Zeb Miller. The junior from Kent State. Gives them a 9-3 lead right now. Okay, we're up to the heavyweights now. Almost a must-win situation for Cleveland State. We think that's Jim Sweater at Kent State there. He's six foot six, 285 pounds, and he has a 14-4 record against Russ Davey, the freshman from Cleveland State. He's also 6'6", 285, and he's 11-6. And and he's had a great freshman year, though. He's had an awfully good start for a uh, true freshman heavyweight. That's a phenomenal start probably one of the hardest divisions to break into. Sweater, a redshirt sophomore. This is his third year at college. His first two were at Miami of Ohio. He was 18 and 20 there last year with 13 falls, but they did drop the sport. And so he got a free transfer to Kent so he can continue to wrestle. So we have this year and two more yet is of eligibility. Wow. Both boys, similar uh, builds, tall, lanky, strong. Davey, a very good freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestler. Looks like he's looking for a, a little headlock throw here. He was the uh, 1999 junior national champ in Greco and fourth in the nation in freestyle. Up, oh, Davey's looking for that. He's got that lock there. He steps in. Nice throw. He's got it. Davey's rolling back. It's, remember, it's a one-second fall here. 45 seconds to go in the period. He's got him tight. This is going to be tough to get out of. It's 285 pounds on top. Oh, Sweater fights out of it. That would have tied the, bottom, or the match at nine. But it's a five-point move. And there was uh, Russ Davey. That was just a phenomenal throw. He got it locked. Stepped right in with the hip toss. Okay, second period now. Davey in the top position, he leads 5-0, and there's the escape to make it 5-1. It's going to be interesting this, how the rest of the match plays out here. I, I assume that Davey's going to look for another throw. As you can see, nice takedown there. Nice little shuck to a single leg. No takedown awarded. That was close. Yeah. Cleveland State needs a pin. So imagine that they're gonna, it's going to look for a couple takedowns, wear them out a little bit, and then look for that throw to a five-point throw right to the fall. They're looking for a double. Watch out. He gets that underhook, and he locks. He's going to throw him again. There, there's a double. 
Goes to the head. Underhook to the head. Tries to throw, doesn't get it, but still comes out behind. And that makes it 7-1. And the escape makes it 7-2. I'll tell you, Davey is good on his feet there. Those upper body toes, you can see why he was a national Greco champ. Very, very in control. Knows exactly what he's doing. Little combinations. Very methodical. Yes. Doesn't hurry it. Makes it happen. And the second period is now over. Davey leading 7-2. Last 20 seconds of the third period now. There's been no change in the score. They've been on their feet the entire period. It's still 7-2, 8-2 with riding time for Davey. And as you said, not much action this last period. But there's a little bit of a closing takedown, and that'll make it a final score of 11-3 and a major decision. I'm sorry, 10-3. It'll make a uh, just a regular decision for... Russ Davey, the freshman from Cleveland State, as he moves his team closer, with Kent now leading 9-6. At 125 pounds, we're back with the little guys. There's two-time NCAA qualifier Brent Thompson from Kent State University. He's five and six this year. I'm sorry, six and one this year. He's wrestling Rocco Mansueto, the first of a set of twins that we'll see wrestling for Cleveland State. He's a redshirt freshman, he's five and six this year, but he was second in the prestigious Brockport tournament earlier in the season. Nice drop, level change there into a single by Thompson. And the takedown makes it two nothing. Thompson twice an NCAA qualifier, twice an MAC champ. You'll notice his right hand is heavily bent. He has a cracked bone in his hand, so, I mean, he's actually wrestling with a broken right hand, if you want to look at it from that perspective. And that's another thing you'll see in colleges. Injuries, uh, not as careful in college as you were in high school. I'll tell you, Thompson, preternaturally quick. He is just like lightning. He was first, second, and third in high school in the state meets. There again. Oh, off the mat that time. He's got a nice stance. And like you said, very quick. Thompson also has had two ACL surgeries. You can see the big wrap on his right knee. And his left wrist is sprained, so he's going to come here. <laughs> Well, he wrestles a really a helter skelter, go for broke kind of style, and you're you're bound to get some nicks and bruises that way. I think you're right. He keeps the athletic department in business, the trainers here at Kent State. I wonder how all these injuries have affected Thompson's shape this year. You know, he talked to me earlier in the day. Said he really wasn't having any trouble making the weight, and that makes a big difference, I think, in terms of your mental frame, in terms of conditioning. Right. The Walsh. Jesuit graduate. He was part of that great string of teams that won state title after state title. Last 10 seconds. And Thompson will go into the second period with a 2-1 lead. And we talked to the head coaches. There's assistant coach Don Horning for Cleveland State, a great wrestler himself, national uh, place winner twice. And the escape makes it 3-2. I'll tell you, I think Mansueto looks like he's got a little bit more left than Thompson. I think part of it may be, as you say, with those injuries, it's hard to perhaps train as hard. And this is a, a key match here. Thompson has really been in control. Mansueto has not put him in a position where he's had to fight to, to get out of the takedown, except for right there. And there it is. And that now makes it 4-3. He's going right to work on that hand, too. <laughs> College, they're ruthless. They don't care what, what, what your body is taped up with, man. Anything they can grab and bend and turn, they will. And you don't see the ref stopping it. There's no mercy. Yeah. 
And there's Jimmy Andresi, Frank Romano's chief assistant at Kent State, a very active and aggressive wrestler and same as a coach. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Kent fans really getting into it here. They want Thompson to get away. And, and this is a key decision. Do you ride him here? I don't think he can get riding time. Ride out for the win or, or Thompson gets a last second escape to tie the match and you're looking at overtime. He can't get riding time, no question about that. Rocco's gotta be careful, because he's just riding the hips there. He doesn't get hit for stalling. Of course, Thompson's not doing much to get off the mat right now, Brian. I think he's waiting for the last 20 seconds or so, and there's the stalemate. Nice little crab ride. He's just got to elevate him up and over. Thompson wants to pop his hips over him to his legs. But I think Rocco's got the leg in. As long as he stays under the arms there, he's okay. This is tough for the referee to call if it's stall or not. It looks like he's got his leg in. If he gets that leg in, he'll be in good position. Last six seconds here. See you. CSU people are smelling an upset. And they've got it. A great third period for Rocco Mansueto. And he ties the dual meet at 9-9. Okay, at 133, that's Brian Bauman, the senior redshirt from Kent State from the captains. He's 11-1 this year, 19-7 last year, third in the MAC. And he'll be up against Phil Mansueto, a sophomore at Cleveland State. He was 18-13 last year. He's 14-5 this year. One of the premier bouts tonight. This is gonna be a good one, Brian. I think Phil's a little fired up after Rocco's win. I mean, I think Buffalo would like to just, and there's the two for Mansueto. Nice little sweep there. Bring him to the mat. Phil also a state champion at Middletown High School. A whole school record with 148 victories, and the escape by Boffman makes it 2-1. You know, I've always thought that uh, twins have an advantage in wrestling because they have their built-in drill partner. I'm not sure it worked in our household. <laughs> Boffman, who spent the first three years of his collegiate career at Ohio State University, transferred to Kent. He's out of Coshocton High School in Ohio. State champion his junior year. He was third his senior year. Was there <clears throat> reason for coming out of Ohio State, or he just felt more comfortable at a smaller program? punctuation mark on that <laughs> down there. Puts him in the lead 3-2. And the escape ties it at three. He's more than a takedown on the escape now. In a very active first period. A lot of movement. Maybe not a lot of scoring, but that will all show up in the last period again when you see he was in a little better shape. The last 20 seconds. Both boys very quick. Notice Coach Efner says a lot more to the official than Coach Romano. He's kind of working them all the time. Complaining there about the fact Boffman working the line. I think you're right. Coach Efner is a very intense uh, coach. And the period ends at three all. There was talk earlier in the year about Mansueto being redshirted, as his brother was last year, but 
He's wrestling now, and there's the escape to make it 4-3. Nice combination. Well, he caught ball from kind of coming in kind of wildly there. Again, that's another difference in college that you don't see in high school as much. You're always putting four, five, six moves in college together to get out, where in high school you can stand up and pretty much cut free. It's like both guys are looking for a little bit of a throw here. Now, I'm very impressed with Cleveland State, though, even in this tie match. It seems like, oh, there's an, oh, nice, nice flurry. As I was saying, the intensity at Cleveland State hasn't been what it should be the last couple of years. And Coach Hefner's come in, and he, he coaches intensive guys wrestle intense. And that makes it 5-4 Boffman now. Oh, instead of taking the one, he grabs the leg for a two-point reversal. Can you believe that? <laughs> he was begging him to go out. He <laughs> gave him... I think he gave one plus two, Dan. I don't know how you could do that, but his score now reached seven five. Wow. For Mansueto. And I think Frank Romano is complaining about that already. Oh, nice little counter there. Oh. He pulls him in. Now, Frank Romano was correct. It was only just the reversal there. So it's really six five now, Mansueto. This is a key 18 seconds, because you don't want to give a point here to tie the match. Oh, nice lift. Whoa, you see the power in both these boys? I'm amazed that Boffman, a redshirt senior, very, very strong, and yet he holds them down for the 19 seconds, and he leads six to five at the end of two. Oh, nice low single again, it's in deep. Rocks him back up. He's got to, that one's got to keep in that crotch and throw him over his head. And oh, and he got it. And it's 8 6 Mansueto now. Bill's got to watch himself because the ref's going to look for, for stalling here because he's staying on the hips. He only needs about six more seconds for riding time, and then he might cut him loose. Hey, looks aggressive enough there. I'll tell you, Cleveland State very tough on top. Probably a credit to Don Horning, who's a great wrestler on top. Alan Freed on his feet, Don Horning on the top. Nice combination. No reversal yet. Oh! No back points, though. And it's 8-8, eight, eight, but the riding time will go to Mansueto. <laughs> Boy, wow. that was close at the edge. I thought there were potentially back points there. 9-8 Mansueto, and Cleveland State jumps into a 12-9 lead in the duel. 141 pounders. Mark Wentz, the sophomore redshirt from Kent State. He's 13-4 this year, and he's gonna be a heavy favorite in this bout. He's going up against a true freshman, Matt DiPolo, just three and six this year at Cleveland State, state champ last year at Bellevue High School. And again, what we talked during a true freshman that first year is so important. This will be very interesting how DiPolo comes out and what he's able to establish here. DiPolo from Bellevue High School. Wentz, of course, wrestled for Streetsboro. Wentz seems to be looking for the big throw here, right to, right to the back. Think about the Mansueto boys at the Polo. They have great workout partners with assistant coaches there at Cleveland State. 
Bad shot by DePolo. I guess yeah, that was the obvious. And he now trails 2-0. Again, freshman mistake was doing fine with what he was doing and got over anxious. Doing a nice job here. He's got to pop his hips. Sit back, pop his hips up and over. Polo needs a point here. Oh, nice power by Lentz. Looking for back points. He shoots a half in there. No, he likes to stay back on the leg. And he'll lead 2-0 at the end of the first period. Polo also a fine baseball player. Hit 310 his senior here at Bellevue, all league player. But wrestling is obviously his real his real strength. Four-year letterman. Nice little ran to be there. A little too slow. Yeah. <laughs> Went racking up a lot of riding time. And it's great to see wrestlers do other sports just besides wrestling. And the escape makes it 2-1. Wentz again controlling the tie-up. Nice little duck under there. And that makes it 4-1. Great level change in that duck under. Wentz looked for a little bit more there, but he has been real super aggressive and looking for back points right at this time. Maybe he's wearing DePolo down. He's clearly the stronger of the two. I think he's just pacing himself through here. He's doing a nice job. period ends with Wentz dominating in a 4-1 to one lead with 2 minutes and 20 seconds extra riding time. Polo now in the top position. This would be interesting too. Uh, do you ride him? You take away the, the riding time or kick him out and try to make up some points there? Well, in college wrestling, it's obviously very hard to, to turn somebody unless you catch them in transition. They're just so strong. You're right. Unless you're a phenomenal top rider, there's sometimes very few of those anymore. Gene Mills, uh, Mike Sheets from Oklahoma State. Scoring from the top. Mitch, Mitch. Oh, got the cradle, he sat in. Oh, he reversed it. Oh, what a combination. Oh. <laughs> And it makes it 6-1, and the state makes it 6-2. Crowd really into it now. That was a great combination by both boys. You know, I'd say next year, Matt DiPolo gets that move. Oh, he throws! Trying. Oh. Boy, very close to the big move there. Very close. That makes it 8-2 and 8-3. That's the way it's going to end with the riding point making it 9-3. Very fine match by both boys. Great effort by the freshman, DiPolo. And again, the dual meet stands tied at 12, and I think the 157s are starting to get nervous. <laughs> It'll come down to them more likely. And there's your winner, Mark Wentz. The redshirt sophomore from Kent State. 149 pounders with a bandage around his head. And Sam Murdoch, the senior redshirt from Penn State University, one of the team captains. He's up against DeFranco, another senior from Cleveland State. This is the only match tonight that pits senior versus senior. And is it fitting it's at the end where two seniors probably should decide a dual meet like this? Murdoch, 11 and four this year. He's 
finally put it together. He's had three losing seasons in a row for camp this year, 11 and four, and he was fifth at Brockport. DeFranco, nine and five, coming off a 13 and eight record last year. Murdoch wrestled for Metamora Evergreen, a relatively small high school in Northwest Ohio. DeFranco for Fairview Park High School. So we've had all regular decisions oh, here. Nice single by Murdoch. Franco's hanging tough. And it's 2-0 right now. And the escape makes it 2-1 here with a minute and 18 to go in the first period. Looking for that underhook again. Jacking him up. Double underhook. Now coming down to front headlock inside trip again right to the single right on the edge you pulling him on he sweeps his foot he'll get the takedown here Murdoch hanging tough doing a great job High school, they'd be called off the mat already, but we're having a nice little flurry here. Seven seconds to go, and they're off. Franco, nice escape there. We're like a little off balance. Yeah, that could have been disastrous. Franco's been close to some big uh, points here. Murdoch just seems to be able to counter just at the right time. 2-2 two, two right now. The Franco is very good with those underhooks. Franco getting that underhook again. Back in with the other one. Going to jack him up and look for that trip. There it is. He's got to hang on tough. There it is. And the takedown. And he takes a 4-2 lead now. came out of it and the escape point ties it at four 55 seconds but DeFranco does have riding time barely 13 seconds more than a minute remember Murdoch has been warned for stalling DeFranco has not a little half shot there conditioning Definitely going to play into this last 30 seconds here. Both shoot at the same time. <laughs> DeFranco looking for a quick snap, go behind. And he gets two. Oh, nice roll. And that's 6-4. That's going to be a ma the match here. And Jason DeFranco, the senior from Cleveland State, with an enormously important victory here at 149 pounds by a 7-4 score. And that makes it 15 for Cleveland State and 12 for Kent State. 157, that's Anthony Ralph, the redshirt sophomore from Kent State. 8-2 this year. He was 4-3 last year until a knee injury sidelined him. He's up against... The senior from Cleveland State, Brandon Gibbs, two and four this year, coming off a 14 and 16 season last year. Now, a victory by Ralph, a regular decision would, would tie the match at 15, and there would be some equity, I guess. 15-15 <laughs> all, but Cleveland State once more, obviously. Oh! Ralph, a two-time state champ at Chanel High School. A decision would tie it. Should he get a major or a technical fall or a pin, that would give the victory to Kent, pouring it out at the end. And how many times have uh, these boys ever been in a position to decide a match? Which is, as we noted at the top of the show, the interesting concept in college wrestling. Nice shot by Ralph. He's just got to finish. He's got to pop those legs off. 
or sit back towards uh, Brandon Gibbs, Gibbs head. Gibbs is looking for the stalemate and gets it. Gibbs a two-time state qualifier. He's 35 and seven his senior year at Uniontown Lake. Nice shot by Anthony. He's gotta come out that back door. Ralph does, it looks like he's gonna, gonna do that. Gibbs has gotta lock in the crotch so he can throw him over. Oh, and he's got it. And the takedown for Ralph makes it 2-0. 25 seconds to go in the period. Gibbs' his older brother, Sean, an outstanding wrestler at Pitt. Both coaches now at the edge of the mat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and they're out of bounds. <laughs> Lucky for that. There's Jack Efner. Of course, he's been at the edge of the whole night. <laughs> The whole Kent team standing. And the first period ends with Anthony Ralph leading 2-0. Little unorthodox in getting those legs in, but it gets the job done. Gibbs now wearing, trying to wear Ralph down. He escaped some fairly dangerous situations in the first period, trailing only by two. You know, and he put himself in those positions too, and he needs to be a little more cautious here with that. He's got that arm locked up again. The ref letting it go. I heard a little uh, noise from Anthony Ralph, but he looks like he's coming out the back door. Now it's 4-0. 45 seconds to go in the second period. I'll tell you one thing that's great to see, Dan. There's only four Division I teams left in Ohio in wrestling. We now have Kent Wrestling Ohio U in Cleveland State and Cleveland State Wrestling Ohio U. At least there's a round robin among the three smaller schools now, which was absent for too many years. I think you're right, Brian. This is great for college wrestling. Look at the score. The whole match has been nip and tuck back and forth. Great wrestling. But again, it's going to come down to that heavyweight match. Even if uh, Davey would have scored a bigger decision, that would be the difference in the match. Last 17 seconds. Gibbs has got to be careful here. Last 10. Last five. And it's going to end up a Anthony Ralph four to one victory. And a well-deserved tie for both teams at 15, each team winning five decisions. What a great match. Good match for college wrestling. Well, I said at the top of the show, it had been some time since we had showcased college wrestling, and I think maybe we need to do it a little bit more often. What a, what a great duel meet, Dan. I think you're right, Brian. Each match was just hotly contested. Uh, a lot of great technique. The intensity was just fantastic for college wrestling. I like to think that it was, there was a certain kind of equity in the fact that it ended in a 15-15 tie. And I'd like to thank both coaches, both Jack Efner and Frank Romano, for helping us out tonight. I'd like to thank Dan for coming down and doing the commentary as well. And I'd also like to thank Lang Kennedy, the AD here at Kent State University, and all of their athletic staff for their support. This ends this last bunch of wrestling shows for the, at the beginning of the year, and we'll be returning for the sectional, district, and state tournaments later in the year. And so for all, good night.